What's good, guys? It's another fantastic session of the Link Up um, uh, under the Echo Room show, obviously. And of course, today, you can see what's going on. It's a lot different. We created this particularly for this amazing, fantastic artist. Um, personally, I dare say he's one of my favorites of all time uh, for Nigerian music, real life, real talk. And a lot of people would agree uh, with the kind of music he makes and his persona. And then also quite controversial. Controver controversial. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. Controversy, my hover around there, go. You know, quite once, once, once. You know, and we'll be speaking with him. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Brimo. The crowd goes wild. Yeah. Thank you. What's well, good, my G? <laughs> I'm good, It's nice to see you. you. So nice Thanks to see you. Me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, look, man, there's so much to touch on. There's so much to talk about. Um, uh, but, you know, as always, I always tell the guests, feel free, express yourself um, uh, to the highest level, you know? Yes, sir. Now, Brymo as an artist, how would you describe yourself? Um, okay. <laughs> I think after like over a decade of um, of peddling what I sell, yeah. I, I have become um, a mishmash of a lot of things. Um, on, on some days I'm just like a I'm a jester. On other days I'm an advocate. Another mm. day I'm like a preacher. And some other day I'm like a porn star. <laughs> wow! But overall, okay. overall, I think entertainment is the is the key. Is why we're here. Yeah. Uh, the idea is to entertain people, to put some education in it, to put yeah. some inspiration in it. Mm -hmm. But in the end, uh, people have to feel like they can stream the song again. Nice. That's so what person nice. are you today? I hope not the porn star. Uh, today, I'm not sure. Somewhere between the lawyer and... Um, I'm MJ and... <laughs> He's in MJ. <laughs> yeah, Michael Jordan. <laughs> no Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? I'm messing. Yeah, so, I yeah. Now, um, let's 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 take a huge rewind. All right. Um, I feel like a lot of people might not know about this. I want to want to know what, uh, uh, how it was for you in the beginning. You being a child, an actual child growing up. Um, uh, what as I would always use social class you grew up in. You know things that were readily available for you and things that you know were you one of those uh, one meal a day situation or was it three meals a day and appetizers? I think you know with fork and knife. <laughs> You know? I think I got lucky. Uh, I'm a one one child a lifetime to my parents. Mm. So yeah. So that's the only child. Yeah. That sort of guarantees me um three meals a day. Because there's not so many mouths to feed anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, no matter how hard things got, it was easier to 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 make do because I'm just an only child. And both parents work. Mm. Yes, till now. Till now. Enough. Uh, he like, eh? you know what I'm saying? So, um, my parents like to work. My mom usually is out of the house all week, uh, doing one business or the other. Or well, she's in Badagri, seeing her, our own family. Mm. And, um, where, where, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Lagos, both parents. Nice. My mom is, my dad is an Awori man. My mom is an Igbo woman. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, uh, uh, I, I, I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I don't now, know it's no, no, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. We're we're towing the line. We're towing the line at some point. Yeah. At what point was it clear to you that you know music was the calling? Please don't say from your mother's womb. No, no, no. Yeah, no, I hear no, that no. a lot on projects. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what, what what happens is, or what happened is, um, uh, I was born and then I started to grow up. And then my mom happens to be a lover of music. Uh, whenever she would have beef with her husband, she would sing. Whenever mm. she wants to praise him, she would sing. Oh. And she had the the all of the vast catalog of Fuji musicians. From my Laomora to to Ekwakara to Muslu, Aruna Shola. Aruna Shola. Uh, the Classic. youngest. And even to the uh Aruna Shola himself. Yes. And um and my dad loved uh, K1, loves Parista, loves Colentin. Yes. And, uh, and um, of course, I, 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 last year or two years ago, I did a show with Kwamwan in Abuja. That's and after the, gig, the next day, I was flying back to Lagos. I was in a VIP. I was in a business class. And he was there and a couple of ministers. And then I, I greeted him and he looked me in the eye and said, and he said, how are you? And I looked at him and I said, whoa. It's an endorsement. That's you. Yeah this, yeah, this is a legend telling me you a legendary boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so it was amazing. So my mom and dad listened to a lot of those um of of those great great great. Musicians. And that influenced you. 
a lot, a lot. And in fact, I wanted to play football. I, I, I said I said a lot. I wanted to play football. And then one day I was at the pitch. And one of the older boys wanted to break my leg because I dribbled him a certain way. <laughs> I was like, we can wall up in himself. It must be 10 for one team to play well. You know, before we win. But with music, I can just be one guy who writes his own songs and sings them. Yeah. So I I, I chose music suddenly. And at what age? Uh maybe I was 14 or 13 or thereabout. Okay. Um by 19, I was recording my first album. You know? Hmm. All right. So I mean, you mentioned uh, you know, wanting to play football, making the final decision and uh dropping an album at 19, or ready for your first album at 19. That time. And now it's a whole different uh, <laughs> football game <laughs> for music, you know. Yeah. Um, at the time, it was go to the radios, go to the TVs. There was no streaming platforms. None of those existed. If you look at that time and now, which do you prefer? Uh, Be honest. Yeah, honestly, I prefer now because there's, um, there is a full-blown democracy in the music uh, space. Mm. Especially where it concerns artistic expression, okay. uh, the democracy is is, is ripe, <laughs> and um, uh, you you may not get the, the maximum exposure now, because whether you like it or not, the radios and TVs are still they're still they're still important. Definitely, yeah. But well, whether you like it or not, you you may not get the full exposure you get. Say if you are signed to a recording label. Uh, controls maybe MTV or BET or even Nigeri or Sound City. Um, uh, you may not be able to get that full exposure because there's nobody putting money behind you. But as an independent artist, you can now uh, grow a core fan base that grows with you daily and weekly and monthly. Mm. Uh, as long as your music is good, there'll be referrals. The people would say people saying. You need to listen to that guy's new album. Mm. Uh, irrespective of what albums you are not, what awards you're not getting nominated for or not. Uh, there's now more power for the independent artist. Nice. Which I, th I think as, as was the point in, uh, in the digital distribution platforms. Yes. They wanted to empower independent artists. So mm. uh, I think, yeah, that, that, that sort of is um, way powerful now. And so therefore I prefer now because um, the longer you're in the business for, the more independence you, 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 you deserve really. Or you would crave at least. Yeah. So, uh, for those of us who have craved independence, and now there is the, all these independent platforms letting us uh, promote and um, and spread music by word of mouth, uh, I think it's great. I think this is the best time to be a musician. Nice. So, um, you had released your first album before getting signed, the first time. Uh, yeah. I. 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 Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that. I think, I think I've, I've all, I'd always had a, a recording deal on the side. Uh, for instance, uh, at 19, I started recording, uh, I did my demo. Or I think I wrote down somewhere that I was going to be a global name at 19. Okay. And then instead of getting that, I got a recording deal instead, which will be 2008 or mm. six or thereabout. Because I was uh, 17 years old in 2003. Yes. Yes. So by 2005, there about, I was at 19, you know, and uh, uh, yeah, I got a recording deal then from a man called Patrick Kujoma in Uko Michael, mm. a, a record called, called uh, Bujok Records. Okay. And, um, yeah. So How he, was that? Yeah. Uh, we didn't get to sign per se, but he was my first sponsor and he gave me the opportunities I needed. I got my first album. And then I went on to, uh, 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 what's it called? Shoot a video for a song called Shoddy. But I saw me where, where, for those who remember. No, and, that's um, me where, yeah. where. So that, 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 that got me, uh, ultimately, the deal I got with Chocolate City later on. Nice. Yes. Now, where is, where is Mr. Patrick? Ukoko Michael. Till now? I believe Still so. hear from him? He has this huge mansion built there. Ah, okay. <laughs> so even if he moves out, even if he has moved out by now, he probably will be moving out to a bigger house, I guess. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <a> big man. <laughs> okay, okay, nice. Now, um, moving on to, you know, you getting signed to Chocolate City. How did that happen? Uh, yeah, I remember I, um, in 2009 or the eight or thereabout, 2008, my then manager, Joke, uh, she, she knew Den really. Yeah. Mm. Which was how I, uh, I believe I managed to get my uh, nomination at the Sound City Music Video Awards in 2008, nine or, so, or thereabout, uh, nine or so. And um, I, 
Joke, uh, she had a lot of connections she, uh, within, within the music industry. Most importantly, people loved the shorty video. Yeah. Even they really loved it. Or Sao of Nanjizi loved it. I think he's, he's left the country now. Uh, a lot of people liked it. And uh, I was on Nanjizi charts, on MTV charts. And that was, yeah, so you were, you were um, speaking about how, you know, you got signed, uh, you mentioned, uh, is it Joke and Derele? Yeah. How instrumental were they in the <clears throat> Chocolate City deal? Yeah, I mean, I think it was, um, uh, yeah. I, I made the video for Shoddy first. Yeah. I think I, I was looking for a director. I found Afam Deman from Festac. Mm. Went to see him, shot the video. I went around the city myself, distributing the video. Mm. I went to Nanjizi. Afam Deman gave me a list of people to contact. So, <clears throat> so I went around and distributed a video myself. And after I was done, I... um. And then, um, <laughs> and then, uh, so Joker being my manager, I think we were having a bit of issues then. So I decided to do all of that myself, getting the video done myself and everything done myself so that I could, um, you know, get the, the results I wanted. And afterwards, she was, was still managing me, of course. And then she uh, went around, she met Jim Relay, she met a couple of people. And then in the process, I met Jim Relay myself. I went to Sound City a couple of times, GZ, I visited a couple of media houses process of distributing and promoting my album, of course. And um, uh, it was later on in 2009, yeah, later on in 2009 that uh, they really called me. In fact, it was 2010. It was probably in March or so. In fact, everything between the phone call from Daniel really to meeting MI to meeting Chocolate City was maybe just within a few weeks. So did, did, um, did they really make the call to Chocolate City? No, no, MI came to Sound City. He came to do his top 10. Top 10 um, show. Yeah. And then he picked my video as number five or so. Huh. That's all. You never met me before. Hmm. Literally, I'm living a Nigerian dream. Interesting. And, yeah, you never met me before. And I, people were telling me in my area. And then I used to argue a lot with my friends in the hood how MI was the best rapper in the world. Mm -hmm. And I was like, fuck you people. You don't know what rap is. MI is the best. It's the greatest yeah. on the continent. You even compare him to Kanye, to Lil Wayne. What the fuck? What's wrong with you people? I don't know anything. Yeah. And then... Um, and then that happened. He was on Sound City and then he, he made that call. And then it was after the show that he told them really that he liked the guy and then he wanted to meet the guy. And then the call came to pick the call. Like, how far? You know, and then he was like, show me MI. <laughs> yeah, like, Daniel, where am I? You know? <laughs> and then next thing I know, I get MI's number, called, spoke to Abuchi. Abuchi was MI's P. Abuchi. Yeah. Currently, yeah. Abuchi is the CEO of Chocolate City. Yeah. And then bam, 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 bam. It was crazy. Within two weeks. And yeah, I was at, I, now, I, I visited the, the house. The first day I went to the house, I saw Jess Jags and I recorded with Jess Jags and it, the song made his album two weeks later. And what song was that? Uh, L of You. And okay. Made his album and then after a few weeks, I met M.I. at lunch, met Ice Prince and then I visited the house, stay a week. At what weeks. point did you record Oleku? Because that, that was the yeah. record. That was the record. We met in March 2010. Uh, April, May, June, by June, July. We already recorded Oleku. Excuse me. Had you signed already? Oh, no, not yet. I so would sign later on. Ah, so you made Oleku before you got signed to Chocolate City? Yeah. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. Interesting. And then we went on and then everything just happened from there. Just kept going from there. And uh, yeah, I, I, I like to think of myself as a control freak. Like I like to, I like things to be a certain way, but I, I could never explain to you how any of these things happened, all of these con connections. So which is why I focus more on just making music. Because that's the only thing I can really control. So mm. I just keep doing that. It's like making music. I can't even control how people perceive the music when it comes out. That, which is why I always say to musicians, you cannot decide that. If you have to dis control that, control the market so much that you spend a lot of money to control the TV, control radio, you are corrupt. <laughs> huh. It's corruption. You, you can only control making music. So I think artists should focus on that. Do you think that's what? Don't you think that's what big big labels do to get the artists? They control the control, where they, they where control they, the market. Yeah. yeah, which is why the music business is dying globally. Is it really dying? It is dying. Why? Why would you say it's dying? Because it's not real anymore. How is it? It's not real. How it's, so? Um, it's plastic. How so? Uh, thank God for digital platforms like Apple and iTunes. That's why we're still here because they're real. That's why I'm still here because I'm independent. But you know that, uh, don't you think that? before these guys um, decided to put the weight of their control behind a certain artist, the yeah. artist is actually worth something? They, they stop being, they stop worthing much. As soon as, the more you keep doing that, they worth less and less. Because um, 
what you're doing is you uh, you're creating energy for the artist that is wrong. The artist can tell at home, sleeping at home, that they didn't earn it. After a while, they can tell they didn't earn what they have now. How how did he not earn it? Okay, he signed the records. He yeah. made the song, right? Okay, exactly. Let me explain it this way. When nobody knows me, I can spend money so that I can be heard on radio mm -hmm. for the first time. Mm -hmm. When everybody knows me, mm -hmm. what am I paying for? To Con stay there. Continuity. To stay there. Yes. Yes. After a while, is the father of after learning. a while, you begin to lose Excuse track me. of who truly loves, who truly likes your work. Yeah, but that's from that's from an artist's perspective. Yeah, but that's but perspective is, is the perspective. Is it really? It is the only perspective that exists. Not as exactly. soon as the artist, as soon as the artist starts to feel like they're no longer deserving, they're no longer deserving, and so therefore the music becomes plastic. It doesn't sound real anymore to the, to the listener. For instance, it's like me being a bad boy. After breaking the hearts of 15 girls in the area, mm. then I now release a song and say, Which area is that? Wherever, wherever I live. In my no, country. No, okay. So okay. I'm Brimo now. I'm a big star. Yeah. And I don't break like 45 hearts for niggas. Yes. I can't come out with track and talk say, I love you, die. I'll never leave you. Who believes that? The people who have heard it are not the 45 girls because there's yes. 200 million people. Well, knowing women very well, women are the public. So if I break 45 women's hearts, uh, five women hard. They will know. Everybody will know. Over, uh, you five. will not meet another girl that will not know. Well, Ow, you nah. will. Uh, yeah. Even the girl that doesn't know. Uh. But the number of people who know who you are it starts to ex expand. And as long as that goes on, you start to gain less traction. Huh. I mean, the business of music, trust me. I know what I'm saying. Interesting. In 2012, when I fell, when I fell off, yes, I had a lot of women in my life who were just like, ah, you broke my heart now, good die. <laughs> so you're saying that was the cause? That was the reason? No, it may not be the cause, but it will, it will not buttress your, your issues. Mm. Because it's, it's sweeter when your fans buy tickets than when you fuck all of them. <laughs> That's the point. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, when this you is know, headed. You know, so as, as, as you go on, there's a, there's a need. The reason I'm here is because I, I want to feel like people love me. Yes. That's why you're here? Yeah, that's why I'm famous. That's why musicians are famous. Because they, they, they want to satisfy the urgent need we, for people to love them. There is a part of the famous person that wants to be loved. That's why mm. we're famous. And so there's a part of all of us, every one artist on earth. And so because that exists, that is real, it's important for me to be able to say that people truly love me. Huh. To be able to say people like me. Do you think, do you think people like will me? love you? Not because I, 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 I managed to toast them to like me or pay them for something. They like my music for real. Hmm. Like I was sitting here when you started, you said, he's one of my greatest of all time. He's one of my favorites. Yeah. But we've never met before. Since. Yes. No, and actually so, we have. Yeah. Like but twice. It, yeah, but in reality, I first met you to sit down and did yes. this. Yes. When you said that, you know how happy I was? I was like, it's all good. Yes, because yes, your yeah. music is good. It's real yes, life. It's, yes. known, it's knowledge. It's almost as obvious as yes. my bow leg, but yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, you got the chocolate city deal. It was all good until it became all sour at some point. It was, it made news everywhere about the situation and the way it was portrayed. I want to, I'll be, I'm always honest. Yeah. The way it was portrayed, it was like you were the cause. What exactly really happened? Oh, well, which is what I was trying to say. Uh, the problem with artists is that when the record label makes you, the record label, label reserves the right to break you. So I got lucky maybe because I had a, an album like Brimstone and I had um, Shoddy before. So I had some kind of... Um, um, Why do you not mention Oleku in any of these? You don't think it had anything to do with your career? Of course, Oleku. Like Oleku was a major Oleku part of your career? was the final break. was the boom, was the... Eventuality. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah. What was I even saying if I said that? Uh, you had a huge album like Brian Stone. Yes. You, yes. Had a, you asked a question. Yeah. Uh, um, the record labels make you and then sometimes yes, yes, they yes, break yes, you. Yes, yes. So he, everything became sour because the label was in constant breach of its own contract. Huh. Constantly. Example. Constantly. Example. Example. The contract was jacked. The contract was not real. It's an American contract. That was jacked and used as for Nigerian markets. So the first time I read the contract, there were a lot of things in the contract that does not apply to this market. Yeah, it's a consistent mistake that a lot of them make, but can you give us instances? That's the instance. That's the only instance that matters. The Which, contract is not on void. If things on the contract does not apply to this market, the contract is useless. But it's still a contract, no? It is. That you honored with your signature. It is. But that was not the reason I left it in the first place. Hmm. I signed it, right? Yes. Uh -huh. I saw all of that and I signed. 
Because I know that as long as we do what we're supposed to do, what can be done here can be done. Then we're good. Business can go on. So what exactly happened? What was the final straw? Well, if that was not enough, I'll count for others. <laughs> well, another very, well, another uh, straw was the label did not advance the recording of Brian's, of Son of a Carpenter, which was the, on the contract. They didn't advance it. I had financial to advancing yeah, or? Course, financial advancing, which was the point on the contract. So I had to go around Lagos, getting producers to work for me. And then on promise that I'll pay later. And then after I got out the album, I brought it to Label. Label took it. Still did not provide any money. I went on and negotiated uh, distribution deals with Alaba. They still didn't provide any money. Until it was done. Alaba paid before we were able to pay producers. Wow. So was the contract. <laughs> but all of that didn't matter. All that didn't matter. What mattered was the fact that when it was time for me to maybe uh, request royalty statement, Label now told me I was owing the label. And I was like, okay, that's fresh. <laughs> because you were owing were you me. Not, were you not making, were you not We were making earning? money. We were already sharing money over and over. Do, do you think <laughs> you made enough to, to wipe out all that, that was invested? Oh, yes, of course. Of course, eventually, I was able to go back and forth with them with numbers. And I realized that, okay, I've paid over my debt. And um, uh, I will no longer be able to proceed with this arrangement. You know. Had the contract elapsed at yeah, the time? Yeah, elapsed. Not yet. Just, I just couldn't go on with it because of the money. Was there a breaches. buyout clause in the contract? No. It doesn't matter. They're in breach. Why are you asking for a buyout clause? Hmm. <laughs> They're breaches. So it doesn't matter anymore. I had to, I had to move on. And then uh, there was nothing done to fix the problem on the table. They kept telling me, moving on. Moving on, we'll fix it. Moving on, we'll fix it. And I'm like, okay. If I cannot trust you to fix what is on ground, I cannot trust you to do better in the future so I'd rather just walk away so when you and, walked away what was and it? I didn't go to court I was taken to court so you were I, taken to court yeah and you didn't show up what they didn't never show up for two years <laughs> I was in court for two years every hearing my wife was pregnant we were in court with the pregnancy every two months every three months how was that how was that for you mentally of course it was, it's, it was it's, it's, you can smile about it now but yeah, at the course. time of course it was it was rough it was rough as fuck man <laughs> was, eh. <laughs> it was rough <laughs> oh my Jesus Christ. Oof. What a question. What was your financial situation at the time? Zero. Because I remember all the so, money I had. Uh, yeah. All the money I had went to the recording of Machangelas and Slaves. Right Fantastic. After yeah. And then we shut down video. Everything was beautiful. Yes. And then um, the court injunction said that I could not release music for maybe 10 days or 14 days. But the public said it was forever. Bremo has been banned for making music for life. It was Junction, part of the things we were hearing. Well, the paper said 14 days. But I could not come out and start fighting for the label because the label was issuing injunction against me. Yes. And they never came out also to say, no, it's just a 14-day injunction. They never came out to say it. So everybody just said that they had destroyed me. Look at him. He can't even make music. I'm going to destroy Bremo. But it was 14 days. So I let that pass. And then I recorded the album, released it. Alaba could not release it because they got a call from Chocolate City saying that they'll be, they be sued if they touch my album. Chocolate so City made that call. He made a call. A precise Who made person. The call? Uh, I don't want to name names. There's no need for that anymore. You guys are friends so now? He made the call. Of, how can we be? We made a call to him. I'm sure. 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 i they made a call. I would say the record label made the call. Yeah. Mm. So they made the call and then we, um, uh, I was taking the court. Alaba could not touch the album. iTunes and Spotify were, were told to put down, um, um, to pull it down. Slaves, to put it down that I was under a contract. So it was, it was an intentional tear down. Which is you. weird because you would wait for the court, right? To issue a judgment and then everything would be taken down. But you went after these people directly. So uh, did did your lawyers use your that judgment. to did your lawyers use that to your advantage? Or uh, well, you... everything worked to my advantage in the end. In the end, I literally, practically won the case. And what did you win? Um, the case was <laughs> it was crushed. <laughs> That's how I won. <laughs> so you just, the judge, all you did was gain independence. Of the judge to issue a verdict and just go. This is my verdict. Instead, he says, "Chokwesi lawyer has accused me of bias." And I'm going to move this case under judge. So they had to walk away from, from the case. The only judgment to pronounce that day was my win. Because 
Because was it, there it, any it, financial attachments to yes, the win? Yes, yes, which must be why they were not pronounced. They were it. supposed to yeah. pay you how much? I could, I could maybe up to 50 million naira. Did they pay no. you 50 million naira? No, 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 no. Have I, they finished the, paying the, you 50 million naira? The judge had to walk away from the case. So there was no judgment pronounced, so you can't get 50 million naira. <laughs> There's nothing right to get. So you, <laughs> you won by being independent okay, this, this without happened. a this penny. Happened. This is the case. This is my witness. This is their witness. Yes. By common sense, anybody sitting in the court will know who has won. Yes. So why the judge was supposed to say, this is my judgment? Instead, he goes, um, um, and the, the chocolate lawyer goes, uh, the judge is biased. Biased? And then the judge goes, um, Brian was lawyer. What do you say? And then she goes, as the, as the court pleases. And I'm sitting there going, you know, Shelly. And then, the judge goes, I'm going to move this case on that judge. I've been accused of bias. And then was it later moved to another judge? No, the, that's the point. The case was over. And here I was sitting in public hearing this judge say that the case was going to move to another judge when the case was going to be squashed. Huh. Thereby creating the idea that the case was still, in, was, was still in court. Corruption all over the country. Anyway, I got out. Do I you asked, think it's possible that my lawyer, the judge was paid off? I don't care what happened. But something happened because I asked my lawyer, Madam, what's happened? Why do you go behind my back to have a meeting with the judge? I was supposed to get a clear statement of judgment. This is my case because the judge went on to say, where is the CEO of the label? They said, nobody came here. Where's the CEO? Nobody. Where are all the officials? Nobody. They've not been here before. He said, no. They've not been here in two years. He said, they've not been to this court in two years. So this artist comes to this court case every time on his own. So it was going to judgment, right? And then just derailed and said, he's going to shift the case on that judge. My, my lawyer said, um, you're a genius. You're so smart. Uh, this case, if you have won it, every artist will sue their label. Uh, and it's become a Watergate what? scandal. What was I said, so you went behind my back and took a deal to just shove the, the case? He said, yeah, it's better for everybody. Better for... Your lawyer told you it's better for everybody. Huh. And she went on, went on and became a magistrate after. Interesting. How did you meet that lawyer? It's a long story. <laughs> There's a lot going on, bro. Yeah, There's a lot a going on. Lot. That's the whole lot. Okay, no. Now, wait. I, I, I say, my black pony. Yeah. There's a lot to talk about about Good. the music industry. It's, it's fantastic. I mean, <laughs> we're going to touch on it. Now, in as much as it's, it's nice to talk about now, as I earlier said, you know, it's, it must have been nerve wracking for you. But I want to touch down on your day to day leaving habits. At that period, yeah. you can't release music. Yeah. You no longer have a label. You're in court every, <laughs> every two, two months, seconds, I God. right? <laughs> and you have a pregnant woman. Yeah. How are you feeding? Who well, was supporting you? Surprisingly, were you eating? surprisingly, I have to say this: the miracle of being Brimo is that from the very get go, from the very day one, from the very day I said I was going to make music, uh, all, all I had to do was get a job as a teacher at a secondary school. I worked for a year to save up money to record my demo. Hmm. Right after doing that, I promise you, bro, Baba, every step of the way, the universe makes a way. For instance, I, right after recording that song, my producer, Mickey Me, was also working at a cafe where he was an IT engineer. Hmm. So he would take the song and play while he's working at the cafe. So his boss walks in one day and says, ah, who they sing? He said, my friend. I won't sign him. That's how I got the deal from Patrick. Okay. And when I sent to Patrick, I went to Mickey's studio to record. I met Joker. We came to take a song from Mickey. That's how I met Joker, my manager. Hmm. And then while that was going on, uh, I, I, one day I was looking at an album and I saw Now Music on it. And I asked Joker to call the number, whether Now Music can sign me when I was having issues with Patrick. And then uh, Joker calls Now Music and it happens to be where I met Larry Lawal. Huh. Looking at my next manager. I saw him two days ago. Not... One uncle or father or mother or girlfriend made those calls for me. Hmm. It was just the dreams. These dreams just kept coming true slowly, slowly, slowly. Yeah, but I'm even I'm even focusing on. So it's, it's you see it's it's nice. So the it same sounds way, great. While I was in court, yes, I was I kept getting deals. I kept getting phone calls for, for shows. Now I was still call and be like, you have a show in Portacourt. You have a show in uh, this in Lagos in Ogun State. People kept giving me shows. People just loved to see me at their events. So mm. one way or the other, I kept making money. Of course, it doesn't mean that we were not stretched. We were heavily stretched. Uh, one time we were, we were supposed to have some antenatal and I just couldn't give money to madame. And she's just looking at me like, ah, I will kill you. <laughs> and somehow, somehow, another gig came and all of the money needed 
from then up until pregnancy just came at once. Up until up until delivery. Delivery. Yeah. You know, so yeah, so there, there's there's a part where there's a whole lot of miracles happening. Nice. Those are the parts that, you know. Yes. Yeah. So now <laughs> moving moving further, you're independent, you're making your own music. The next project you dropped was what? Rasta uh, MDNS. Well, fortunately, Apple, Artists and Co. They, they didn't drop the album. They said, "Bring proof that album is yours." To Chocolate City, they told me the same thing. Somebody said the album is theirs. They should put it down. What are the evidence you have to show that the album is yours? And um, they also asked that um, a judgment should be presented from a court, from a reputable court in Nigeria, to them hmm. to, be, to be proof that truly the album is not mine. Which is supposed to be the right thing to do. So, I, I, of course, I went on, sent Apple Music some ridiculous information just so that I can prove that the music is mine. I sent them enough information for Apple themselves to claim that the album is theirs. <laughs> and then they said, okay, ah, it's yours then. And then they asked the other guy to send his, I'm sure. But since they couldn't provide those proof, I'm sure that's why we, we still have, which I could have done with Son of a Carpenter, by the way. Because hmm. I have all the data. Why didn't you? I have all the information that could put Son of a Carpenter down and make it mine. But why should I do that? We had a contract. We were supposed to share money together. That's how it's supposed to be for life. And as I sit here right now, I've never gotten a dime from Chocolate City on Son of a Carpenter, from Realty, from Ara, from Good Morning, from that entire album. Till today, not one era I've gotten. Till today. Till this very moment. Why is that? The dissolution of the, of the court proceedings, is that why? No. They just don't want to pay money, that's all. Have you asked for it? Yeah, I have. They don't have any money to give you. They probably have debts on them from banks and stuff running the liberal. That's not my business. Anyway, so in the end, I have to say this today because a lot of people didn't, don't know it, you know? And um, same thing with Oleku. Same thing with everything I've ever done with you. Haven't, you haven't I've ever earned a dime of royalty from anything I've ever done with Chocolate Oleku. City to this very moment in cash. The farthest we went to was that I was owing them money before I left and that what I earned covered what I owed, right? But that was then. That was in 2012. So this so is if 20, it has covered, this 22. is 2022, yes? This is nine, ten years later. Yes. Where is the royal system from then till now? But that's by the way, anyway. I have another eight albums to myself to keep. So huh. there's no need to run for that. But I have to say it publicly for people to hear it. You know, so... Uh, yeah. And so we just kept going. And then I went on to the Tabla Rasa. But the injunction, the not being able to release the album with Alaba... You know, it, it, it inspired me to just say, you know what, maybe CD era has really passed. Let me talk about my digital space. Yeah. It did, it inspired me to do that. And then most importantly, but it, it, it caused a lot of fracas, a lot of issues because I could not now recoup money easily to reinvest in Tabula Rasa. When Tabula Rasa came, I had to get an essay to sell a car <laughs> so that we could pay for production of the album. Who's essay? That's my wife. Okay. And then we pay for the production of the album and then we did Tabula Rasa. And then we went to do clitoris. So wait, then to do SA sold her car to fund Tabula the promotion Rasa. of Tabula Rasa. The recording altogether. Recording and promotion. It's just, it was just impossible because, I mean, we have a child now. So <laughs> What happened to your car? <laughs> well, we have to use my car. So we have two cars. So we have to sell one to be able to produce the next album. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we have to manage my car. And then uh, we went on and then album after album, things got better. Yeah, things just got better over time. And I'm, I'm glad because nobody is suffering, not even the enemy. <laughs> Everybody's in business. Everybody's doing fine, which is the point. You know? I mean, with the, new, with the new management at Chocolate City, can you, you can't go back and revisit the conversation? Well, if they pay me enough, why not? Oh. <laughs> but when it comes to Son of a Carpenter, I, I, can't, I can't be fighting over one album when I have maybe another seven to myself. But well, some of those songs on that album are the reason you are Brimo. Ain't no doubt about that, but Oleku is on the album. Oleku is on Ice Prince's album. Yes, not yeah. even Oleku. Ara. Good Morning, Good morning. Ara. These yeah. are records that... Really, are really, really yeah. huge. But I'm grateful because they are not my biggest records anymore. Hmm. That's the most important thing. Because now, let's, let's even... Let's even... Okay, okay. You know what? That said, let's not even dwell too much on that. Let's even now move to some of the controversial statements that you... You seem to always... Anytime you want to drop those quotes, now Twitter, you they go. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, at least factually, it should be about two or three times that you've said 
no, not the most recent. We're still going to that one. Uh, that you're the, I mean, I don't want to misquote you, but I want to say something along the line of uh, the best artists in Nigeria. No. Oh, how I'm, did you say? I'm the most powerful artist in the world. The most powerful, yes. What led to that? What mental space? Look, I, I see a lot of stuff, right? I had to try to personalize and visualize what the person might be going through mentally, not in a bad way, not to the person they Chris, no. Yeah. But it's like, what frame of mind the person must have been to utter those words? I think if, if you find me, a, a better songwriter, who is also a better vocalist, who is also a better performer, then we can have this conversation. Hmm. It's easy to find a better songwriter than Brimo, but they will not be a better performer. It's easy to find a better performer than Brimo, they will not be a better songwriter. It's impossible to find a man as good a songwriter as Brimo that performs equally good, that records equally good, and handles those things himself, and is well-behaved. Hmm. It's impossible to find any artist on earth who has so all of the qualities. You, what, 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 was, what, was that an epiphany or some sort that yeah, you showed up yeah. at some point? I'll go one morning and he's like, one morning, it's like damn. God damn, that's me, nigga. Damn, I'm that good though. <laughs> and then you no. decided to go to Twitter. No, it started, it just started with realizing that I'm a black man. Go all over the world. When you find a black man who is really, really good looking, who sings, it doesn't say much. If a black man who says a lot, it doesn't sound nice. Find a black man who sounds nice, he doesn't perform well. You find him that he's all of these things, he's like a Christian or Muslim, he doesn't smoke or drink. There's always something wrong. You know, I'm, I'm an overall musician. Which is why I had to go far as saying that I'm no longer a musician. I'm, I'm, I'm a sonic artist. Because the people I said the description really fit everybody on again. So uh. sometime earlier this year, I became a sonic artist. I, I, I paint pictures with words. So I had to describe myself once Were you all. not a sonic artist before sometime? No, I was always a musician like everybody else. Why is that? The word sonic artist never existed until I said it. Really? It never did. Really? Sonic artist. I'm the artist. world's first sonic artist. Sonic artist. Which in a way means artist, a singer. Yes. But the difference is that it's a sonic artist with T, not E at the end of the artist. It's a painter. Huh. Okay. We we'll no, use it his makes pictures. More sense. Okay. It's it makes more sense. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. It's sound, but it's artistry. It's painting. Huh. Interesting. I'm liking this. Now, um, there was a moment, there was a period where there was, I mean, there was a thread. You you put out a thread. Uh, I can't really, I can't seem to remember or place my finger on what the conversation was, but it caused so much conversation, you know, comparisons, outrage by different people. And it was also for Twitter. Yeah. I don't know why you keep going to that. Please, how many followers do you have on Twitter, by the way? Uh, over a million. <laughs> or roughly. Irish. Irish to get. <laughs> <laughs> roughly. You know? Um, there, there was, there was, there was. And they're all real, by the way. Yes. There was, it, was, <laughs> it, it seemed to be, it seemed to appear um, from the mental space of, you know, I don't want to say cry for help, but along that line, yeah. what was that about? What I say? Well, I, I can't remember exactly how you put those words. I've never said anything. But everyone was, I've never said anything to cry for help. Every, no, no, no. <laughs> everyone was concerned for you at the point. Ah, yes. I can't remember what I was. Can you remember anything about it? A line is something. It would come to me. It would come to me. Okay. Now that said, at this point, music has become a lot more competitive. I'm talking new music distribution companies, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, distribution labels in the country, pumping heavy money on certain artists and the charts can't stay still, right? Some big names have become upcoming artists overnight, real life. Because it belongs to the Reality establishment. <laughs> huh? No, no, no. The These are not drop you anytime he wants. No, no, no. These I'm are not other even... people. Yeah. That's the problem with the, with the game. Once you're signed to a label or you're signed to money bags, or industry gatekeepers, when they are done with you, they move on to someone else. Then, you, then the word becomes upcoming artists now. My question used. is, why can't they stay afloat? Because they did not do it on their own in the first place. So when the person who brought you here is tired of taking you farther, they'll keep you where they've... They, they, they so do you want to you. tell me that for eons, for eons of music making, dealings, performances, shows, the person wasn't bettering themselves in any other way concerning in the fact, music business? In fact, even for myself, who has spent the last 10 years bettering myself, suffering, going through the throes of, of evolution, album yes. to album, 
If I were to take a recording deal from you today, three years from now, I'll become obsolete because I am good now. I have money in advance. I have a car. I have a big house. Huh. What do I need to write songs for? It doesn't matter how hardworking I am. I'll become lazier and lazier every day because as soon as I drop the lyrics, the single, you have made a call to Clarence. You made a call to, to TG. Yes. And say, come and shoot the video for Primo. And you pay them 10 million era. And boom, I'm sitting with them and saying, this is the concept. I say, yeah, I like, is that, I like is it. Is that TG's price? I like it. No, no, I'm saying, for instance. No, because I keep hearing 10 million era consistently when it comes to TG or Mori. Well, maybe. <laughs> I don't even know. I DM'd him once and he didn't respond yet. <laughs> but my point is, if that were to be the case, you paid for me. You took care of everything for me. TG comes up, or Clarence comes up with the concept for me, shoots a video for me. Then I do it. Then I keep doing it like that, day in, day out. After a while, I'll start looking for boys to give me beats. After a while, I'll start looking for boys to write me songs. I'll become lazy. Well, of course I'll become lazy because I have everything sorted. Hmm. So, yes, if you are signed to the establishment, you are going down with the establishment, which is why you start hearing things like Rihanna having an issue with label to take a catalog back. Kanye. Everyone Taylor has Swift. Catalog, almost everyone has catalog issues. Because at some point, the artist realizes that they are becoming lazy. They cannot be as creative as before. Because these people made them. Now, instead of them to act like myself and walk away from the catalog, I'm going to create a new one. <laughs> is that a wise decision? Oh, it's it is. It's still your sweat. It is because you will now your realize... Your intellectual property. You will now realize the price. Oh, you can never get it back. You Rita, walked Rita, away from it. Rita Mali could not get Mali's catalog back. But Mali's catalog back. If Mali can't get his catalog back, who can? What are you talking about? I mean, um, uh, uh, what's her name? Chance, uh, no, the rapper, the, Chance Chris the rapper Brown, was able Chris Brown to did get, it. No, no, no. Chance the rapper was able to get um, his album back. No, he was able to get someone's album back. Oh, I heard Chris Brown was able to get all of his back. Yeah, I heard Chris Brown is the youngest artist in the world in history to ever own his catalog. But that's not necessarily true because I owned mine before he ever got to that point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the point in the story is that you, you have to now pay the price and t tell yourself, I'm a, I'm a fool. So I've signed my life off to these guys all this while. Then you must not leave it Do alone. Do you think that would ever end? Uh, well, if uh, as long as musicians keep fighting for it. I want my catalog back. You are wasting your time because you signed a deal. And if you go back to that contract, they are holding on to it because they know you can't take it back. They know. So all you're talking in the press, you can't take it back. Except you just want to die trying to take something back. For instance, I gave you all of the reasons why I could have taken some of the capital back. Yes. But imagine the amount of stress, months, years, you would have taken me to hire my own lawyer Go after them. I have meetings after meetings after, after, after meetings. Now sign papers, now take some of the capital back. In that two, three years, I'd, I'd made three albums. Mm. Why should I be fighting for something when I could create a new one? So I'm not saying it like, like um, it's a punishment. It's a way to tell yourself, I'll be smarter next time. So now leave it alone. Walk away from it. Most of the time, when artists are willing to walk away from their albums, labels can let you go. What causes trouble is that artists are always saying, I want my album back. As soon as you can be ready halfway in to let the album go, start a fight. But make sure you are ready to let the album go so that you can create new ones for yourself. Okay. Now, um, that's it. 2022. You are now a sonic artist. Yes. Not artist. Yes. Yes. Um, what is that doing for you now? Uh, it's, um, oh, it's for freeing. Jesus. <clears throat> the week I said, <clears throat> I was now a Sonic artist, no longer a musician. I forgot the existence of every musician on earth. No other artist existed to me anymore. I was free. I was alive. About. <laughs> hmm. Like, I no longer fit into the same box. Because I, I was now, I, I now belong into it with, with, with a different profession. Because I'm a Sonic were you, artist. Were you battling with the existence of other artists in the space? No. Were you having no. constant headaches on competitions? No. And no. I was battling with what the, the system was doing with us. Hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know. Because I have no proof of sub, 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 substantiated. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but I can say this for free. Over 90% of musicians on earth today who are known belong to the establishment. They do not belong to themselves. They have no concept, no value. They are actually of no use to the public because they are not saying what they want to say. They are saying what the record label approves of. Do you know how many times we record an album and record label will tell you that this is politically incorrect. You can't say this on this track. 
We can't use this song because this song is against my friends in the, in the Senate. This song is against my friends in the corporate world. This song is against my friends this. We move this song, we move that song. Mm. You know how many times it happens? So many times. Yeah, but don't you see, don't you, I mean, playing devil's advocate, don't you look at it and say, come, uh, the reason they're saying this what is my not to with them? hinder your bag. I'm an because no, but you're making money as well. They're giving you so money. How, come on, my... how are you making the money that you're making if they are not trying to save you from... Let me ask a question. Uh, what, what do you call it? Self... Let me ask self a question. Uh, Let me ask a question. Let me ask a question. Yeah. Do you think Brian will make some more money now or then? When is the bell? Brian will make some more money now. Yeah, he would because he's independent. He makes everything he makes But every year, every year, you have mentioned it yourself right here. Yeah. How I seem to be very controversial. Yes. But every time you go back and listen to what I've said controversially, you will now realize that it is very plenty common sense. Not saying it so, doesn't make sense. So there are a lot of things. It's not the sense. So there are a lot of things that artists... We're sure that yes. there's sense there. So there are a lot of things that artists say on records that record labels remove that are supposed to remain. But because it seems controversial at first, they take it out. They, they, they do not let the public enjoy the content. Most of the things you think are, are politically incorrect when they are said are not a problem. Why? Because nothing ever said ever started a war. It is what is done that starts a war. Whenever somebody comes and says something that this thing is bad, it's usually bad. Somebody somewhere wants to punish them for saying the truth. That's why war starts. Mm. Every single Majority. time. Every single time. So what is being said on the track is always good for everybody to hear. If the artist can have the balls to say it, record it and like it. Does Brian have the balls? Well, my balls are probably made of platinum. <laughs> I don't have balls of steel. <laughs> Maybe diamond, I guess. Because... At some point, I realized that there was nothing left. Let me tell you something I will say for, for real today. There have been no rich Nigerian musician. No, nah, it's never been. How is that? How possible okay. is that? If you take one or two of us who are from money, show me one Nigerian musician who came from nothing, who now lives in Banana Island, who has properties all over the island, who is a rich man. No, nah, we struggle. We struggle a lot. We get help from the state. We get help from the corporate. We get help from everybody. But the real issue is the soul of the business. Which is where I came from. When I realized I was moving from Michael, and I was making a killing slowly myself, why would I let that go? Why would I give power, that power to a record label and let them make money for me? Mm. When I'm enjoying the feeling of being a ghetto boy who is now making He's money making for himself. Mm. So what kills us is that we start, everybody starts like me. They start to go up Start to get an opportunity to make money directly and then we give it up, that power up to somebody else. Then we always end up old and broke because somebody ends up owning your catalog. In fact, today, if you were to offer me a billion dollars for my albums, I still won't sell it to you. It's a billion dollars, bro. Watch what you say. Yes. So you can offer it first. <laughs> That's why I said it. <laughs> That's the point of the story. You know what I'm saying? So if I don't offer me a billion dollars, I'll stop and be like, why do you offer me a billion dollars? Because... <laughs> What's he going to get from his album? I feel just one use the billion me, dollars play. You just know? play, Abby? Yeah. Then I go, no, Abby. These then rich guys do that. Then I go, take him. Yeah, rich guys do that. Then I go, take him. You know what I'm saying? But I will not advise that you play with your money like that. Yeah. Huh. I'll advise that you invest in something that can make you money. Yeah. Yes. Obviously. Yes. Yeah. Someone that wants to use one billion to play, he, he probably does. But that's the best <laughs> Now, um, we'll see, we 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 should we should get to the other part of the show. But 2022, what's the plan? An album coming out? Um, coming out? 2022 collaborations. Let's yeah. hear about it. 2022, there's been Theta came out May 27th. It feels like it was five years ago already. Like I should release a new one. Mm. <laughs> it was two months ago. Yeah. So Theta came out 27th May. And for those who still haven't listened, All Pigeon, ten songs, beautiful. And then there is um, sorry. There's an um, order at the concert, October 1st. Yes. In fact, we just left a meeting today finalizing arrangements for that with Landmark. So um, there's an order concert coming. There is a collaboration album that's really, really huge. That's really big. That's going to be like a... Are we going to ever see you collaborate with them? David O. Whiskid. I'm talking, you know, commercial artists. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you seem to have your niche market unlocked. Yes. Okay, so sometime last year or two years ago, I was supposed to have a collaboration with Adekunle Gold. We were on the verge of it. He called me, we spoke, I was ready. So what happened? I said it was going to be an EP because I do not believe in singles market. Hmm. Maybe, maybe Gold didn't get back to me because uh, it was supposed to be a song. He proposed a song. 
And I said, no, Baba. Let's do. Did you follow up on it or you just dropped it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he made a call. So I told him, I said, I'm ready. I'm willing to let me know when we're ready to shoot. But I will only do it because it will be an EP. So I can make more money. This is how it works, bros. If I drop one song, it's one song. Just one song. So when people are raving on a song, they have nothing else to rave on. Just that one song. Yeah, well, if I drop an EP of six songs or an album of 10 songs and somebody goes, my God, this Brambo's new single is hot. They have seven other songs to follow. Yes. That makes more money for the collaborators. Okay. 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 Um, are they going to go the still tilted towards your market? I know. Somehow, but, you know <laughs> but the point is, really, I would do yeah. anything with anybody. If I had a collaboration album I'm bringing out, which is supposed to come out sometime in August or September or October one. or November or December, I'm not supposed to tell you. <laughs> it's a surprise project. And it's as good as making music with any other mainstream artist. Hmm. Yeah. And and um, it's as commercial as it can get. And I'm looking forward to it. And it will be a big one. And um, afterwards, uh, we already had um, Blasphemy this year. Yes. Terra Culture. Yes. Yeah. And of course, we have all that coming. And um, yes, there's something that's coming. Uh, as a Sonic artist, I'm going to be putting on my first album as a Sonic artist. Fantastic. Can't yeah. wait. And and it will be differently distributed from everything you've ever known with distribution of music in Nigeria. And I'm so looking forward to that. And that announcement will come sometime between now and October 1st. Hopefully October 1st on the day of um, of Order itself. On the morning of Order, I'm going to announce a new album that is different from everything I've ever done before. From anything any known artist on earth has ever done before. Let's see how that plays from out. From distribution and everything. Wait. Yes. I can't wait. Brymo, thank you so much for thank coming you, through. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Now to the best part. Stay tuned for the live performance. Trust me, it would blow your mind. Let's go. Hi, hi, hi. My name is Brymo. And right about now, you're on to Ekuru. Do like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. <laughs>